Welcome to Studio Fabricana. In this series, we're going to be looking at seam finishes, which will include the French seam, the flat felled seam, the zigzag finish, what I'm calling the press and stitch, the nice pinked edge, and we will end with the Hong Kong finish. In this segment, we're going to look at two different, different seam finishes. One that's really simple, using pinking shears, the other one's a little more complicated. It's known as the Hong Kong finish, and it uses single fold bias tape, which you'll find at your local fabric store in a range of great colors. For this method, um, where it's one of those methods where we start sewing the seam with the right sides together, so that's the dark sides facing each other. We've sewn a 5 8 of inch seam allowance, which is the most popular seam allowance for commercial patterns. And all we're going to do is take our handy dandy pinking shears that do a nice zigzag edge and we're going to trim the seam allowance pretty close to the edge because we still want to have a decent sized seam allowance. So once we've um, pinked the edges all the way along, now I did both edges at the same time but you can choose to do them individually depending on the weight of your fabric. You might um, find it a little bit hard to go through two layers at once. And then with this method, all we're going to do is press our seam allowances open and that's pretty much how you do a pink seam. Now one of the advantages to this method is that it's really flat. There's no zigzag, there's no binding, there's no surging, it's just a really flat edge. The disadvantage is you still get a bit of fraying and you may still get a little bit of fluff coming off the fabric. So this method is generally used when you're going to be lining a garment, especially if you're using maybe um, a, a wool or a little bit bulkier fabric. Um, you're not getting any more bulk from your seam, it's just a nice flat seam and then the little frayed edges get covered up. This is another method using um, a 5 8 minute seam allowance and our right sides of our fabric facing. This is probably going to be the fanciest of the uh, seam finishes in the series. And you may agree, like a lot of the other ones, we're going to press our seam allowance open. And then we're going to work on each of our seam allowances individually. So we need to, after we've pressed, kind of grab one of the seam allowances and let the other fabrics fall away. This method actually uses other materials other than just thread on our sewing machine and this is a bias tape. Now what this is is the single fold bias tape which when you take it out of the package is actually creased on both sides but we've pressed open one side for this method. Once you've pressed open the one side, you're actually going to push open the other side. It still has its crease and you're going to line up the raw edge of that side with the raw edge of your seam allowance. And then we're going to bring it to the sewing machine and what we're going to be doing is stitching right in that crease. It's about a quarter of an inch and we're going to stitch all the way down right in the crease lining up the raw edge of the bias tape. So here we have sewn right through the crease along the whole length of the seam. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to press it back along that crease, which it should do pretty easily because it always already was pre-creased. But let's press it in place. The next thing we're going to do is again just dealing with that seam allowance, we're going to fold kind of right around our seam allowance edge and the bias is going to wrap right around it. And just like some other ones where we've kind of been wrapping, we're going to kind of wrap and then press as we go. Be careful not to burn your fingers. That steam can be hot. And if you'd like, you can put pins in if you're more comfortable with pins.
Now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching it in place. So some people would stitch a little bit away from the that creased edge. You just want to be able to make sure that you're catching that um, edge of the bias tape on the back side. I really like the clean finish of stitching right in that ditch between where the bias meets the seam allowance, so that's what I'm going to do. So now that we've sewn through all these layers, um, right where the seam allowance meets the bias tape, um, it's all held in place. Now of course, um, when we, if we were just sewing, we'd be using a thread that matched the fabric much better, but for the purpose of the video, we've used this contrast yellow so you can see what we've done. If we look at the underside of the seam allowance, you can see that there's still a lot of leeway, um, but the seam allowance, the binding is all caught in the seam. So once we finish the one side, we need to work on the other seam allowance. So pull that seam allowance away from your fabric so you're not catching any, any other fabrics. We'll do the exact same method on the other one, and then we'll come back and look at the finished product. So now we've finished our second seam allowance, and you can see the finished product. This is what it looks like on the underside. The advantage of this method, even though it's a little bit more time consuming, because you have to sew the seam twice, um, is it looks really nice, it looks really professional, and you could customize the binding. You could do it in a print, or you could just get um, a nice contrasting color. It just looks really fun. And you could, if you were really daring, do like I have and use a contrast top stitch. Thank you.